Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., Julie interviews experts on all areas of clutter, physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. A clutter coach and professional organizer, Julie also offers tips to help you get clutter-free for a more joyful and fulfilling life. Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about five unconventional areas of feng shui that you need to know about. You know, the whole point of this show is to get you to clear clutter, so I'm very excited because I have yet to read a feng shui book that doesn't say, first thing, clear your clutter. So we're going to talk about these areas of life, we're going to talk to you and explain how feng shui, what it is, and how it can help you create the life that you choose and deserve. So I'd like to tell you about today's guest. Michelle Powell is the owner of Some Like It Organized, a Los Angeles-based company that uses organization, feng shui, and life coaching to empower its clients to create their ideal life now. Through simple tools, techniques, and a bit of relatable woo-woo, Michelle coaches holistic-minded people through emotional blocks, physical clutter, and energetic discrepancies. She is a member of the National Association of Professional Organizers and certified in feng shui. She is currently enrolled in a life coaching training program for women. Welcome, Michelle. Hi, Julie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Well, we are thrilled to have you because I think feng shui is such an amazing tool. But can you briefly describe for people who might not know what feng shui is, what exactly is it? Well, I consider it a system. A lot of people think it's a religion, and it's not. It's really just a simple system and, and with ancient wisdom to cultivate balance and harmony and flow of the energy within a space. So it's really just there to support you in your space. And, wh and why it's so powerful is all of the, the thousands and millions of people throughout these 4,000 years doing the same thing at the same time for the same reason. So just that alone makes it so powerful. You know, when I, um, you're in L.A., and I used to live in L.A. for 10 years and have a friend that's a realtor, and he had clients who said, you know, they were going to have the feng shui looked at before they purchased a house because it was that important to them. Right. It makes a lot of difference, especially when you're, for the first impressions, especially if you're selling a house. Absolutely. Now, I've read a few books on feng shui. You're the expert here, but I really want you to talk a little bit about, and if I'm wrong, please correct me, but everything I've read said clear the clutter. That's the first step that you want to do, and I've actually had feng shui people refer me and say, hey, you need to help them clear the clutter before I can come in and do my thing. So am I right, or do I need to be corrected? Absolutely. There's the three-step process. It's uh, declutter, uh, set an intention and then beautify to support that intention. So you can't have any feng shui until the clutter is cleared. Now can you go in a little more depth about those last two? So clearing the clutter is the first? Yes. Yeah, definitely making space and making sure everything you have is what you want. So you know, so in other words, have, giving attention to every single thing that you own. Uh, and then you set an intention for the space, and that looks like moving your furniture around or placing items in certain areas, and then beautifying to support those intentions and also making it beautiful so that you love it even more. Excellent. And that, that's the first time I've heard someone summarize like that. I think that's perfect. <laughs> laser focus and gets us going and tells us what we need to do. So today we're going to be talking about five unconventional areas and I'm very excited about this. I would think bedrooms probably at the top of the list or kitchen mm -hmm. and that's what people traditionally are like, hey you gotta come in here and feng shui this. Why do you think these areas sometimes don't get the attention that they deserve? Well I think it's my it's my background in organizing that kind of led me to this um, realizing that you know clutter is a huge part of it like we said but th these are the areas that people forget about because and, and they are so powerful because you know what do you want me to start off with that first one because I think that kind of explains why you are now please as that. you see fit okay so the first one is the entryway and this is often neglected in not only the beginning of the house but every single room people think that uh, if they have piles in the entryway it's not really cluttering up their space or if it's crowded, if the door is crowded and they have a lot of coats hanging or stuff hanging on the walls, it restricts the flow of energy right off the bat. It's the start of the energy flow in the space, in the whole house or in the whole room. So what your entryway says in, in your house or your room 
it's going to unfold in the rest of the room and in the rest of the space. So oftentimes I go into a home and like I said, either they have a lot of jackets hanging, sometimes they have stuff on the back of the door so the door doesn't open all the way. And you're not you're not really restricted to go in, but you still are physically doing something to move through that space. And so if you think about it, that's the energy you're bringing to the space. So it's really important to put attention and space around the entryway and really give it some love. Now I'm curious because the majority of time I work from home and I know there are a lot of people as telecommuting gets more popular that are working from home so the entryway not only affects our 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 personal home but I'm going to assume that that could and correct me again if I'm wrong but that could affect our professional life is is that right? Right so the entryway no matter where it is on the feng shui map also known as the bagua it represents your career or your life path. So, it, like I said, it's the representation of how you enter into life, right? So, when you think about the entryway, the the path up to the door, and just the the space around the front and the outside, the inside and the outside of the door, that represents your life, your, your what you are here to do, and what and how you're supported in that. So. I like to say put a fountain or a water feature near this area to kind of get things moving and it increases the flow of money and even plants in this area really represent the growth of what you're doing in the world. Can you maybe give an example of, of a client, again not having to name um, anyone or something, uh, I like to call them a concrete example of how you perhaps work with them to get their entryway up to speed and, and what a result of that was because maybe or, or some examples of if this is cluttered, what it can be doing, how it can be affecting your everyday life. How can it be affecting your everyday life? Well, like I think you touched on that, you know, leaving, entering and going. Um, just making it efficient so that it's easy to do both. What comes to mind right off the bat is maybe shoes. A lot of people leave shoes on the floor kind of in a pile. So again, you're walking into that mess or walking into an abundance of shoes, maybe an overabundance of shoes or an overabundance of anything, coats, jackets, like I said. And you're first of all seeing that right off the bat too. So you're noticing the shoes or you're noticing whatever's overabundance and imbalanced and then therefore you're not really walking into you know here's my space it's beautiful I love it what how can I you know do what I want to do right now so right off the bat you know I, that's an example of how it wouldn't support you you're kind of flustered probably well where do I put my keys I don't have a system that's an example of how it would not serve you that's more on the organized side but still it does have an energy the organization to it as far as outside, again, if you are, if you think about sort of a, a, a pathway that's really dry and all the plants are dying, you know, up to the door, it's like a desert getting there, that can represent what's going on in your career or your life path. Maybe you are out of work. You know, we want to make sure that it's a bright and welcoming when you walk up to the door. All right, excellent. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, mm -hmm. we have the shoe situation under control. My husband built in the, our <laughs> stairway a place to put all the shoes. There are no shoes at the entryway, so we're good to go on that. Now, the next area I learned from you is under the bathroom sink cabinet. I'm really excited because, oh my gosh, so many people get stuck here. Where do uh, most people create clutter? Is it cleaners, makeup? What, what have you found? I've found everything. A lot of just toiletries and you know, cleaning supplies like brushes and sponges and stuff just shoved in there all the time. So I say the bath bathroom sink, but it could really be any um, small cabinet that's you know dark and, and tiny. A lot of the times we don't really know how to do that. We don't know how to work with that organization wise and, and we also don't care about that tiny little space underneath our bathroom sink. But what I'm here to tell everyone is that every single area in our home has an impact on us, no matter if it's dark, if it's bright, if it's right in front of us, or if it's in the corner. So what I tell people is you want to give attention to every single inch. And underneath the bathroom sink never gets the attention that it needs. So I say that it really should be clean and organized and maybe even with something red underneath there 
to kind of protect the the water draining. You know, if we think of water being uh, the metaphor for money, we're we're having the metaphor of money draining away from us. So the color red really helps protect that. And you know, feng shui is a lot of metaphors, so it's not necessarily literal, but so we we use the color red to protect that energy. And so the um, because of the pipes, if I'm understanding correctly, and that area is very cluttered, then you could be preventing money flow. Right. So if we think about the water going down, not only is it draining, but if it's cluttered underneath and never paid attention to, we've got double the energy working against you. Right. So put some nice uh, contact paper down so maybe it's a little brighter in there, right? So it's not so dark and black um, or like an abyss, you know, sometimes you just you see it and it's just like a, a long a, a long little uh, dark hole and you don't want that. You kind of want to be able to see all the way to the back or have a pull out thing that allows you to get to the last thing that you store. Now are sense. there any other things that can be affected by that because I know in because according to the blog, well, everyone's going to have a bathroom placed in a different area. So right. it might be in your relationship or health. But any other things besides the money and the draining that a that a cluttered uh, bathroom cabinet might represent? It just represents. Well, it, it it doesn't represent anything particular because, like you said, every every area is going to be every bathroom is going to be in a different area. But it's just one of those places that, that gets neglected so often. And people just throw stuff in there, and they don't give it the attention that it deserves. And so we want to have that little energy flow around the items, even if they're barely used once a year. It's still good to have that energy flow around what you have in the, in the contents. All right, excellent. Thank you. And now let's mm -hmm. talk about the basement. I mean, talk about a breeding ground for clutter. <laughs> so, what have you seen in that area, and what the, what does that represent in feng shui, and and perhaps some corrections? Yeah. So the basement represents your past in feng shui. So if we think about it, usually you know maybe holiday decorations are down there, maybe old furniture, lots of uh, dust and dirt and cobwebs and stuff. So if you think about what does that represent for you, how does that, what does that say about your past? You know, so a lot of the times there's broken pieces of furniture or items in there. Maybe in one home I saw this really like spiky, pointy furniture piece. And if we think about that metaphor, the spikiness of that is pointing upwards to you. So it's actually, you know, arrowing into your energy, right? So we want to keep that, that pointiness off the, off the map in there. But it's really just about knowing what you have, knowing the contents, making sure that there is uh, space around everything. And, and you might want to take a look at the contents and so it so that it doesn't hurt you know where you're or where you're coming from and so you kind of make it clear and clean so that you can move forward Does that make now, sense? I'm really curious because I live in the south and not everyone but a lot of southern homes don't have a basement I know right. that some have have a crawl space so with a crawl space or in a house that doesn't have a basement what would represent your past well, it, it is only if you have those those levels. Uh, if you do just have one level, it doesn't really work like that. Um, so if you have a crawl space, that might represent that level, I guess. Um, and in that case, I would just really clean it as much as you can, kind of clear out the cobwebs or any dirt or you know nests that can come up. But just have that energy flow as much as possible. All right. Now we do have attics. In the mm -hmm. south, I'd say a lot more attics than than basements, and that again, another area that can you know you throw it up in the attic and you forget about it. So let's mm -hmm. talk about that. Yeah, and you, and you may have guessed since the basement's your past, the attic is your future. And so when I think of the attic, I think of uh, odd pieces of either holiday stuff or decorations or artwork, something like that that's stored up there. And since it's an awkward space, usually it's you know like this. We want to make sure that we have space around everything. And what I tell people is to kind of use rows. So use rows to, to store so that you can get around each you know, row of contents. And again, make sure what your contents are represent somewhere that you're moving towards. 
So maybe the memorabilia that you have, the, all the pictures and stuff from your past might not be best up there. It's not a problem if, the, if they are stored up there, but what can you put up there that would represent where you want to go? You can put maybe a representation of something that you're looking forward to do in the future or be. I'm going to go out and do this as, that as soon as this interview is over because we don't have a huge uh, attic, but it's empty. Although it's actually we had a squirrel break in, so I don't even have any clue what that could represent for the future. But I love that idea. There are certain things we want, so I'm excited to do that. Now, another area I would love for you to tell. Oh, good. You want to add something? I I do. You just mentioned something. So you mentioned sort of a squirrel coming in, and I, I mentioned cobwebs for the basement. There are three things in feng shui that energy or chi does not like, and that's dirt, broken things, and clutter. So if we think about it, if you have nothing in your attic, that's great. You don't need to necessarily store something in a space. Um, but to say if you have pests living in there, that's considered dirt because Pests are not going to come in a clean area or an area that's often touched, right? So that's a that's a point right there. If you do have nothing in an area, you still want to go up and pay attention to it. If you have a bookshelf even with, with books that you never read, by taking them off the shelf and cleaning it at the bottom and putting them back the same exact way, you're changing the energy. So it's still, again, the whole theme right now is paying attention to every area, every inch. Well, thank you. All right, we'll get on the squirrel. We had to figure that out and one day figured out that, oh my gosh, it's a squirrel that's stuck in our attic. And another <laughs> area I'm excited for you because I'm going to play this for my husband when we're finished. I learned not to put things under the bed. So please talk about that because I think it's pretty common. And from an organizing perspective, I'm sure you've seen colleagues say, hey, utilize that, that space under the bed. What does feng shui say? Well, first of all, first of all, I study Tibetan feng shui, which is Western style, and it's really flexible. It's not like the traditional rules-based style. So we believe that there's always something you can do. If we think about those in New York or really, really small spaces, sometimes you have to use stuff under the bed. Now, the bed really represents your nourishment and your intimacy, so it's very important to have that flow and space around the bed, kind of like making a circle of energy. And so that kind of holds you and gives you that power that you need to uh, feel what you want to feel in that bed and really nourishes that um, or nurtures that. So if you have to have something under the bed, I recommend, again, just keeping it organized. And if you can make some sort of a flow or a space, you know, from one side to the other, even if it's the smallest space, that will help because you're, you're giving it the flow that it needs. You're giving it attention and you're giving uh, respect to the energy so that you're respecting the energy flow around the bed. Approximately how, and I, go, and I think everything's individualized, and so, but someone might be listening saying, well, okay, if I change around my bedroom or I clear the clutter under my bed, how long does it take for me to see results? Everyone's different. When I started implementing all of these myself, it was immediate. It was really fast. And it's really great to see people that don't believe in it, such as my husband, when they start believing it. Because it just, something will happen and it would obviously be because of the recent change. And it's just not, there's no denying it sometimes. But, so I'm not sure how fast things will work for you and and also it's, it's not just going to be this one area we have to look at the whole you know I work holistically both organizing with both organizing and feng shui so it's not just going to be one-size-fits-all uh, remedy for anything that might be not working in your life but I would say just do all that you can and when you see a little bit of improvement then you know you're on the right path if you don't feel any movement in the energy or change in in um, what you're feeling or what you're getting from that area, then maybe take a look at other parts of that area or that space. Like I said, maybe the broken things or dirt uh, needs to be checked out. Do you have any clients' examples that you'd be willing to share? Maybe again, that whether it helped their career, their love life, that you're just like, oh, people might be interested in knowing, because they a better understanding really of the power of feng shui and, and how that can help people create the life they, they deserve. 
Actually, yes. Someone just posted on my Facebook wall the other day about their their bed. I was talking to them about their bedroom, and they have roommates, so they really just have their their room. That's their space. And her bed was underneath a window, and and because it opened up, it was that was the best way to have the most space in the room. And she was talking to me and how and telling me. She wasn't really happy. She was kind of like floating around life. It wasn't really working. And I said, well, where's your bed? And she said, it's under the window. It's blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, 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 no. You are not in a power position with your bed. You need to be supported with your bed against, your back against the wall. So I had her move that bed um, against the wall. And so for like, like this example, um, and then she was looking out at the window, and everything changed. She said she started getting uh, just more energy and more friend, like talking to more people. So it was just a super great impact on her life. That's to, and it's nothing to do with under the bed, but it's still a feng shui story that I'm really happy to hear. Excellent. Now, do you have any final thoughts on these five unconventional areas that we've talked about today? I think the biggest a uh, point I just wanted to make is that attention to all areas um, and making sure that those dark nooks and crannies are paid attention to, you know, dusting happens, cleaning is important, and just making sure that everything you own you love and you don't keep anything that you don't need or don't love because I think that what you love brings life into your space. I agree with you. Absolutely, 110 percent on board with you. Now, do you have because you're also an organizer? Do you have any final one tip on clearing clutter that you'd like to share? Clearing clutter, I would definitely just start by picking the picking out the things that you know you really don't want or need. Just going through the house, looking at your jewelry, at your closet, in your desk, in your kitchen cabinets. What do you know right off the bat that you can let go of? Because what happens in feng shui, when you move anything out of the space and you create a little bit of space, no matter how big or small it is, you're able to think better. The mental capacity increases. So you're able to think, oh, should I let go of more things? Oh, I can see a system that could work now. Oh, I, I think the color would be better in this shade. You just your brain opens up a little more, so I would definitely see what we can let go of there, and and it, that'll help you energy wise. Excellent. Now, please tell people how they can find out more information about you and any other good stuff you've got going on. Yeah, so you can find me at somelikeitorganized.com, and I'm offering a free. It's an audio program right now. It was a recordings of my Q and A calls. There's four of them that I did about feng shui and organizing. So it's participants asking their own questions. We, go, we went through their own life and situations and circumstances, and we kind of worked through their issues and really shed light on a lot of different aspects about stress, about uh, working from home, um, about just career and life and, and all that wonderful organizing stuff as well. So that is on my website at uh, somelikeitorganized.com slash resources. And you can sign up for that to receive the audio recordings. All right. Well, excellent. Thank you, Michelle. We, I learned a lot today, and it looks like I've got, as soon as we're finished, I need to run and, and do some things. And I, it was wonderful. And thank you for all your great tips on unconventional areas to feng shui. You're so welcome. Thank you, Julie. All right, everyone, go out there and clear some clutter to create the life you choose and deserve. Thanks for joining us on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. You can find out more about Julie Caraccio and her services at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. We'll see you here next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.